Hi, this video is going to continue the EOC review number three. This is going to be part two dealing with inverse functions. Here are the math three standards for those of you that need to see those. Um, your functions primarily for inverses are going to use this notation. So it's going to have this little negative one. It doesn't mean an exponent. Just, that's just the notation we use for inverse. Uh, for inverses, remember x and y get swapped. And they're always going to be reflections over the diagonal line y equals x. So um, y equals x will be the line of reflection for all uh, functions or relations and their inverses. Um, just remember, a linear will go to a linear, a quadratic goes to a square root, and an exponential will go to a log function when you do the inverses of them. Let's do a couple. On the end of course exam, you may be asked to do inverses of simple tables. Uh, those are my favorites because they don't really require a lot of work. You just got to think a little bit. So when it says f negative 1 of 3, that's an inverse. Of course, inverse means x and y get swapped. So this 3 really is not an x. It's a y. So I want to go to my f of x column. That's my y column. And I want to find the 3. I'm going to report the output as the x value. So f inverse of 3 is going to equal 4. No work required. You just got to remember to switch the values. Next question. In this question, it says, what is f of 2 minus 5 f inverse of negative 1? Now, this f of 2 doesn't have an inverse. So this is going to be an x value. But this inverse here, this negative 1, implies that this is going to be a y value, that, that number inside. So if I go to x and I go to 2, my output's going to be negative 5. So f of, f of 2 is negative 5. Now, if I go to the y column, remember f of x is y again. So if I go to the negative 1, and I report my output there, that x value is going to be 3. So f inverse of negative 1 is 3. However, this has a minus 5 on the outside. So this is going to be negative 5 minus 5 times 3, which is minus 15. And that final answer is going to be negative 20. Feel free to check that subtraction and multiplication using a calculator if you need to. All right, next question. For inverse functions, we want to follow three steps. First thing is we want to um, call the g of x y. But then we want to switch x and y. So we're going to swap places with those. And we're going to solve for y. So we're going to rewrite it as x equals 6y plus 5 divided by 2. Now, we want to solve this for y. We want to isolate y by itself. So to get that, a uh, couple operations got to be undone first. I don't like those fractions. So the first thing I want to do is I want to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of that 2 on the bottom. That's going to leave me with 2x on the left side. But importantly, I won't have a fraction anymore. So I'll have 6y plus 5. Beyond that, I want to get rid of the constant terms that are added or subtracted. Since I have a plus 5, I'm going to subtract that from both sides. Now, I can't combine those because those are unlike terms. So my left side is going to just be 2x minus 5. But now I have that equal to 6y. And my last step to solve that for y is going to be divided by 6. In this case, it's probably just best to put the whole thing over 6 and leave it as one fraction like this was above here. So the 6s will cancel out. And now I just have y equals 2x minus 5 over 6. Now, when you get to the EOC, if it's multiple choice, you're likely going to see it in this form, g inverse x. But that is your, that's your new y value. So we're just going to write that as 2x minus 5 over 6. Remember that you can check these using a graph. Please write this work down as I'm about to erase it and show you my graph on the left side. If your goal is to use technology to check your work, this is what you'll do. First, you'll key in the original function as y equals 6x plus 5 over 2. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to rewrite the function and switch the x and the y values so that you know what the inverse graph is going to look like. You can also graph the line y equals x to see, does that actually reflect? Does that split the middle of those? And it appears that that is a line of reflection for those. And finally, your answer, if you solved it out correctly, if I take that out and that out, and I just focus on my inverse function, how it should look, my answer should overlap that graph. You can see those are the same graphs. So I know that I did my work right. So 2x plus 5, minus 5 over 6 is the correct answer. All right, on to the next question. OK, we're going to follow the same techniques as before. We want to change the f of x to y. We want to switch the x and the y. 
and we want to solve it for y. If you think you can do this on your own, click the video on pause, and then I'll have it worked out after you unpause it. I have the answer worked out. Let me explain my steps. The first thing I did was I switched the f of x to y, and then I just swapped the x and the y. The next thing I did was I added 10 to both sides. So you can see that I brought this minus 10 over here and made it positive. Then I took the square root of both sides to get rid of the square. And when you take a square root, since it doesn't specify you can't plug anything in, I did a positive and negative for the square root. And so I rewrote it as f inverse x, that little negative 1 with plus or minus this uh, square root of x plus 10. Let's check it with a graph. Putting the original function as, as y equals x squared minus 10, and then swapping the x in the y's place, you get x equals y squared minus 10. You can see what the graph and the inverse are supposed to look like. If you double check y equals x, you can tell that that's going to be right in the um, line of reflection of those two inverses. And my answer has a positive and a negative. So if I only graph the positive, let me take this out. You can see it's only going to give me the top half of that inverse because a, a positive and a negative is technically not a function together. But if I graph the negative one separately, you can see the bottom half. So that's the complete inverse plus or minus. It's worth noting that you may get some questions on the EOC that say, well, what happens only if x is greater than 0 in this case? Um, so if you have a function where it says x, x can only be greater than 0 in the original function, then you won't worry about the negative. Because you can see here, um, it's the just the positive square root is going to give you the full inverse of the function if I'm only defining my function as x values greater than or equal to 0. So just something to think about as you're navigating these questions. Let's go on to the next question. Hopefully you've done exponential and logarithmic functions. Um, this question here is dealing with an exponential. And the inverse of an exponential is going to be a log. So right off the bat, if I have 3 to some value, some exponent that's an, a variable, it's going to have to be a logarithm. We can rule out these two. Let me show you how to do that, though, uh, more formally. So again, I'm still going to switch the x and the y. So I'll say x equals 3 to the y power. Um, now, if I'm doing this using log form, I'm going to say uh, I'm going to say log base 3, since that's my base. So I'm going to say log base 3 of x. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. So log base 3 of 3 to the y. Now, when you do a log base, of an exponential that has the same base, those end up just canceling out. And so that's going to give you y. And so I have log base 3 of x is equal to y. Um, and so that's going to be, since that's y, I'm just going to leave it as y. And you can see that's going to be your answer. Um, another way that you could write that, although it's probably not going to look like this on the EOC, but just in case, it might say log of x divided by log of 3. But I, I think more. Uh, modern questions are just putting the base right in the log, so I think that's going to be our, our our bet on this one. We can check that with a graph. All right, here I have the necessary things graphed. So first, y equals 3 to the x. Switch them out. x equals 3 to the y. And y equals x is our line of reflection. Those look like uh, that'll give you the right graph. Now, if we have our answer correct, let me close this up, and I put y equals log base 3 of x. I do get the same graph that was overlapped here with x equals 3 to the y. Um, how do I input log base 3 of x? Well, you're going to type y equals, just type the word log, and then you're going to do underscore. Underscore. So you'll hold down shift minus. Put that 3 in there. Put the x in the parentheses, and then you got your graph. On to the next question. This question is also going to be dealing with a log. So see if you can uh, simplify it and get the correct log function. See, these all have logs except for this one here. Um, anything with an exponent is going to give you a log as its inverse. Go ahead and try the question and unpause it after we uh, give it a shot. The correct answer is B. Here's my work. First thing I do is I switch the x and the y. So I'll say x equals 2 to the y minus 5. I'm going to add the 5 to both sides. We don't want that minus 5 over here. So I'm going to add that and get x plus 5 equals 2 to the y. Next, I'm going to take the log base 2 of both sides, since my exponential function has a base of 2. That log base 2 and base 2 and the exponential function will cancel out and just leave me with y. So I have log base 2 of x plus 5. And there's my function with the g negative 1x, since I had g of x as my original function. As a graph, it'll look like this. 
my original function, y equals 2 to the x minus 5, swapped out, x equals 2 to the y minus 5. For good measure, y equals x in the middle. And then from there, we can take that off and see, does my actual function, when I solve it, give me the same value as the inverses when I swapped x and y? And the answer is yes. So we know we did it correctly. Next question. The last question in this video, part two, number seven, um, in the diagram, which graph A, B, C, or D represents the inverse of the solid graph? So the solid graph, if, if it's hard to read it, I'll, I'll bold that up for you. This is the graph that I want to find the inverse of. And this question is basically asking, do you know that the inverses are a reflection over the line y equals x? And that line is going to be going through the point 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 2, and so on. So if I draw a line that goes through those points, only one of those functions reflects over that line. Can you tell which one it is? If you said D, you're absolutely right. That's going to be a reflection over this line. So see, those are the same distances from there to there. So the answer is D. All right, that concludes our inverse uh, functions. Again, this has a link to the, uh, the handout in the video if you need it. Um, the next video is going to be talking about structure or expressions, factoring, expanding, simplifying expressions um, with an emphasis on using technology to kind of assist making sure our answers are correct. Stay tuned for more.